Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my video comparing Vainglory and Arena of Valor. This is a long video. I do not expect you guys to want to watch all of it. It is something you might be able to have on in the background and just listen to me talk. Uh, I'll also put timestamps in comparing the specific parts. But essentially what I'm going to do is overview two major things. I'm going to look at the user interface, which includes things like the menu, skins, heroes, all that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to look at the in-game mechanics and, and the control systems as well. It's very difficult to compare these two games. They're built on very different engines. Vainglory very advanced for a mobile game with a very different control scheme. Arena of Valor taking the tried and tested formula that Mobile Legends brought and just doing it a little bit better. I want to make it very clear here that I think Vainglory, by quite a significant margin, is a better game. So if you want to watch the first minute of this video and you want my recommendation, it's always going to be Vainglory. I am a Vainglory player, I would say that. But Vainglory, to me, is the best mobile game on the market right now, simply because of, of what it offers for a mobile game. It, it is like a PC game on your mobile. You, you have graphics that are better than League of Legends in some way, uh, you know, on your mobile. So there is no comparison for me. But I think there are things that Vainglory can learn from Arena of Valor, so I'm going to try and neutrally compare the two. Right, so let's have a look at the Vainglory UI, and let's start with the color scheme. It's a, a dark browny, black, gray type color scheme, scheme, very similar to Dota 2. I would compare AOV more to League of Legends, and they, they, they sort of appeal to two very separate audiences. This kind of dark color scheme, it's supposed to give off a professional moody vibe, you know, like, we, you know, really serious kind of game. Whereas, obviously, the, sort of the brighter, the blues, the reds that come through in AOV and League of Legends are supposed to be a bit more jovial and a bit more appealing to the eye. I've always preferred a brighter color scheme in games. Um, I don't know about you, but, you know, that, I, I feel like sometimes the Vainglory UI is a little bit dark, you know. I like the way that it changes color. It kind of freshens things up, you know, depending on what you're looking at, but... You know, sometimes I just feel like it's a little bit dark. Uh, maybe because I'm not a fan of Dota 2, I suppose. I actually quite like this section of the UI. You've got all your free stuff that you can get in one place. You can see exactly what you need to do to achieve that free stuff. You can click on the plus ice button up here to get ice. And obviously, um, you can also purchase glory in that way as well. I've actually come to the market now. Uh, you can also click and see some of your... Um, some of your stats here the problem is the rest of the ui is quite complicated to navigate and, I, and without going into too much detail um i actually think some of the ui is over complicated and especially for newer players the market it's got so many things like what do i even click on in the market what do i even want to go to to buy it it is quite difficult to to navigate and i actually think they probably hinder themselves a little bit by not making it easier to purchase the more simple parts of um of the sort of the, the market like if i want to just go buy ice i have to go all the way down to here obviously i can click the plus button as well but you know going to the market it's quite difficult to navigate to buying that ice feature so you know i come to featured and suddenly it's like esports tokens well you know featured for me should be um should be like cool skins on deal or, or that kind of stuff but this you know the featured esports tokens is, is probably going to apply to a very small uh, percentage of the user base you know, Guild, they have a tab in the social section, but honestly, I, I I feel like the Guild should get their own expanded UI with more functions. Like, it's uh, at the moment, it's kind of limited, and I think that's a disservice to Guilds. Look at the rest of it. I think I'm going to skip through the other two, but Heroes, I feel like they should be separated into sections, like Sniper, Carry, Jungle, um, Mage, uh, Carry, you know, whatever, whatever else. Like, they should have those sectioning. Because, like, the skins, they do it really well. I love the way that they've done the skins. You can look at all the skins that you've got in this way. Um, and actually, talents are separated in the same way. So I, I think the Heroes tab is, is doing a disservice to itself because everything else, I think, is organized quite nicely. Um, the one thing that Vainglory doesn't have, that AOV does, is the AOV you can view the Hero model and the Skin model. Um in the client which i think is pretty cool to do that in vainglory you have to go into a practice game where you can select any hero and any skin to view it but you can do it straight off the bat obviously it uses more battery so the aov ui actually uses more battery uh vainglory doesn't drain as much battery when you're just on the menu and stuff like that so th there is those drawbacks there which vainglory has in its favor you don't want to you don't want to be spending all your battery life on the menu obviously uh, one thing that as well that i want to touch on was the the cost of skins in Vainglory. Now, you know, these kind of skins, if we just go to the, the marketplace, let's have a look at the market. Um, and usually they have like deals on skins if we go down. So you can see, you know, uh, let's see Legendary Twirl Koshka. 
um, down to two five nine nine. You know that that's what is two five nine nine in 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 ice. That's about twenty quid, uh, or let's say twenty five to thirty dollars, and that's the, the the deal price for one of these skins. Now people will say that that's really expensive, but what you have to remember about the Vainglory skins, and I will show you it in comparison to the to the the AOV skins, is Vainglory skins are complete remodels. In most cases, they are complete alterations to the Vainglory hero model. It is not just a recolor. Vainglory probably could do with just introducing some recolors of normal models for a very low price so that people want to, who don't have as much money want to purchase something unique like a skin. But most of the Vainglory skins, if you look at them, they're like complete remodels. Like this, Even the lowest tier Adagio is a complete remodel of his original skin. They've all had something added extra to their model to completely change them, which is why you'll find that people... It's difficult to compare these skins to something like Mobile Legends or Arena of Valor skins because Arena of Valor and Mobile Legend skins in, in often they just simply change the colors that's very different for vainglory they don't just change the colors they completely remodel which is why you just see the the higher price and if on in anything i'd say it's warranted like that you can grind these skins for free not many other um mobas actually let you grind any skin in the game for free sure enough they'll give you some free skins and they'll give you options to get free skins at times but any skin really in vainglory apart from like the seasonal editions and limited editions any sort of normal to rare to legendary skin you can grind yourself like without having to spend any money which is you know again a really uh, positive part of the vainglory um system then we come to, to the finding match system i, I what I I think this is fine. Like this is this is fine. You see, you're paying the thing. That's a really interesting part you can select. But I, I would like to see this a bit more engaging. Like Blitz is supposed to be a fun, um, quick game mode, but it just looks exactly the same as standard. Like there's there's no thematic differentiation between going for a standard or a Blitz. Uh, I just you know it's it, I feel like Blitz deserves like a bit more of a flashier kind of like oh five minute game mode you know really really quick stands out standard is like you know that you're going to go play standard so you you don't need something to point out this is a standard game you you're going to go find a standard game if you want to find a standard game when you have new people you want to entice them into learning by getting to them to play these short game modes so that's the Vainglory UI the heroes and the cast and just to uh, quickly mention the Vainglory I believe has thirty six heroes in total right now so. 36 heroes in total for Vainglory, with obviously scope for them releasing more. 37 is about to be the next one, um, so they're going to be releasing more up to 5v5. So that's the Vainglory UI, heroes, and cost, and also looking at the skin system. Right, so let's have a look at the Arena of Valor menu and user interface. Now, I'm going to be straight up here, guys. I am a Vainglory player, so obviously I'm going to be usually slightly biased towards Vainglory. And in general, I think Vainglory is just the better game. However, when it comes to the user interface and the menu, there is lots of lessons I think that Vainglory could learn from Arena of Valor. I think they've definitely got a lot right here. You can link to Facebook for one, allowing you to find friends that you know in real life, which always makes it more fun to play, because who doesn't like to play with their friends? When I log in, this is the opening screen. So yeah, it's nice to have news, it's nice to be shown offers. But I think Arena of Valor got it right in the sense that when I log on, I'm greeted with an immediate way to play a match. When I open Vainglory, my intention is usually to play a match. So having that right there in front of me, especially in a really attractive style, like you can see here, is really enticing. And I think Arena of Valor got it right. They've, in, they've really woven the similar kind of dark theme that Vainglory have got with really bright and enticing colors. And I think that's the, the color scheme they've brought to the table here makes it a lot more interesting and fun to look at. In, and they've got the animated screen. Now remember, I did talk about the Vainglory UI being less battery intensive. Obviously here, the, uh, the Arena of Valor UI, the menu system, it uses way more uh, battery than you would do for, for Vainglory. So you are wasting more battery if you're not plugged in uh, on the menu system. So you probably want to spend as little time here as possible. Again, there are complicated things going down here at the bottom, but again, they're kind of out the way and they're not important to actually finding finding the really important things. Vainglory has kind of woven this complicated system into their actual menu system where you need to use to use that to find the important things. Arena of Valor have got important things on the left, but if you want to explore further, they are down on the bottom and they're kind of out the way. So they, they know that the shop should be its you know its its own thing they know that your profile should be its own thing you can go straight to heroes talents which are the the sort of the basically the summoner spells or, or the sort of the spells that you can use in game and then the armory where you can set your own builds now this is really really great by the way you can pick a hero so you change your hero i only own two because obviously i haven't played much arena of valor uh, and you can build 
a uh, a builder uh, an item build and then use that in game so it'll just automatically suggest the items for you to build based on the item build that you have set for yourself and if you don't know what to build you can go to the leader rankings you can go to the um the overall world rankings like you can see here i can click on the number one guy in the world i can check his info i can go to his combat history and i can see what he's been building on certain heroes so if i'm not i'm not sure i can go and check out what is a, essentially a pro player's build and basically copy it and put it into my own build path and not only that we're looking at the ranking system here there is a leaderboard ranking system it gives people th something to work for um, it gives people something to strive for, which Vainglory doesn't really have that leader system in, in implemented, which I think would be a really cool thing for them to do. So in, overall, I think the Arena of Valor ranking system works a bit better because it gives people that sense of competition when playing solo queue. You don't yet have that in Vainglory because we don't have a leaderboard, we don't have a, like a challenger ladder, we don't have anything other than Vainglorious Gold, and then you're basically just competing against your VST. But you can't compare your VST to anybody else because there isn't that leaderboard there. So those are some really awesome things. I can also go down here to, um, you know, whatever this is. I don't know. I think it's like gifts you can get for participating in certain events. And I've got I've got an achievement, and I can collect all these different, you know, these these different things. I can get I've got these achievements that I can collect rewards for. It gives me something to strive for. It gives me a sense of progression in the game, which I think again is a really cool aspect. I can go down to the social, uh, and that's my friends and the mail. I can check out my friends here, um, and it's just just friends at that point in time. There is a social tab here where I can join randomers if I really want to. I can literally join anybody um, and join a game with them. So, again, like really, really cool aspect of the Arena of Valor user interface. So, in general, you can see where I'm going here. Uh, the Arena of Valor user interface is just, it's just a bit nicer and easier to navigate. The important things are really thrown at me on the left. And then if I really want to go in depth, I can explore the UI in my own time down below. It's not woven together. So I don't have to na navigate through unimportant things to find the important things. All the important things are there for me before I even start going. So let's have a look at the heroes in Arena of Valor. There are 53 in total. So... Uh, 53 in total and you can see that you can rank them by how good you are at them So the proficiency that I talked about earlier obviously means how much you've practiced in your performance with those heroes And you can see for me. I've only played Valheim so Valheim's gonna be at the highest for me He is the first hero that everybody gets to play in Arena of Valor So there are more heroes in Arena of Valor than there are in Vainglory um, Again, it's a 5v5 so it probably needs that kind of depth I don't haven't personally played obviously played every hero here. I'm assuming they're all fairly unique and individual um but a lot of them draw inspiration from other heroes that you see in other games. So, for instance, Lubu is basically like Jarvan Fourth in uh, League of Legends. Now, obviously, they are both based on um, Chinese history or Asian history in general. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Chinese, so don't hold me to that. And you'll find that Wukong as well. Wukong is pretty much seen in, in, in most MOBAs these days. I can't even find him. He was down the side somewhere. But Wukong um, is another hero in this game. He's from a, a folklore tale. Uh, from from Asia about the the monkey that flies on the cloud with a long extendable stick you find him in League of Legends But you'll also find him here. He is but you'll also find him in Arena of Valor as well While we're here, let's have a look at that really cool intro animation that each individual hero has and you can see uh, Their in-game model as they jump onto the screen you can buy the heroes and if you want to buy a hero It's gonna cost you roughly about ten pounds a pop. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them will be different depending on their release date it also has um, their gold value there as well, and it gives you sort of their proficiency, and it tells you how hard they are, and you can see uh, hero guides are linked to their equipment, and you can build a build for a hero before you even get him. So there's so many really cool things um, here, and you can see his skills on the, uh, the right-hand side as well, um, and it gives you a, a little sort of tip to play the hero, so that's really cool. Having a look at the, uh, the skins, you can see that... There are some remodels here. Some of them are just recolors, but some of them are remodels. And you'll find that skins in Arena of Valor are a lot cheaper. Um, let's have a look at the epic skin here. I'm assuming this is like one-off legendary. An epic skin in Arena of Valor would cost me somewhere between £10 and £20. More like about 12 or 13 Which is about $16, $17. You'll find that they are about three quarters to half the price of Vainglory skins. Um, but again, you know, they have uh, slightly lower graphical requirements and it's a little bit easier to model these guys. They also have a selection of skins that are basically recolors. So if we have a look here, this is Kricknack and essentially 
this skin here is is basically just a recolor of his original skin and um, there are some little bits added but this is basically just a recolor and that will cost me a very cheap amount of, of five pounds if you want to buy that so that's probably something that vainglory could learn from just cheaper but sort of less in-depth model skins um but again you know there's lots of depth here to the arena of valor hero system and obviously you can also get a lot of depth out of the um the skin system that they've got as well but you do have to remember that you can't grind skins for free in Arena of Valor because they are completely surplus to requirements, as they are in Vainglory. So you do get gifted some skins for free, but you can't grind skins for free. If you want to get a skin in Arena of Valor, you have to pay for it. That's probably uh, reflected in why they are ever so slightly cheaper. Whereas in Vainglory, you can grind skins for free, and you'll find that might be reflecting why they are slightly more expensive. So... Again, swings and roundabouts. Vainglory give the, the option to get skins for free for completely free-to-play players, whereas Arena of Valor don't, really. They give you some skins for free now and then, but they don't they don't gift you them. They don't allow you to grind them in-game. So, they, you know, so there you have it. Vainglory, you can get skins for free. Arena of Valor, you can't, really. But Arena of Valor skins in... So, at the end of this, you'll notice that, in general, I think Arena of Valor has got the better user interface and menu system. I do want to make it clear that Vainglory are planning on changing their current system, um, but this is just based on what they have right now. I know that I think around 5v5 or maybe past that, they are planning on doing a massive overhaul of the user interface, and hopefully they draw some of the positive points from the Arena of Valor interface. I think the menu of Arena of Valor is easily accessible. Lots of important stuff is right there without having to navigate through uh, a huge amount of clicks or taps. And it's, it's generally a, a lot easier to look at and gleam information from. If you want to go in depth, there's a lot more uh, in depth stuff there as well. So everything that comes from the menu system is great. The, the, the match history, the pro builds, your, your personal builds, every, the, the, the leaderboards, all that kind of stuff is really great from Arena of Valor. When it comes to heroes, it's way too difficult to just say that you know, Arena of Valor has more heroes, therefore is better. Vainglory's heroes are really well designed and very unique. I think I, I feel like when I play some Arena of Valor heroes, they are very similar to each other, and I don't really sometimes feel the massive uniqueness of those heroes themselves. When it comes to social, Arena of Valor, you can link to Facebook. Um, they've got guild systems. You know, they, they have like everything that Vainglory has, um, but they just add a little bit extra to it. And so obviously uh, they have the edge there. Progression, you have achievements arena, in Arena of Valor. You have the ability to level up, etc., etc. et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, I think Vainglory is, they mentioned at their last Unified Live Championships or the last time they were talking about this, they really want to increase the ability to um, have some sort of progression in Vainglory. So this is something I guess they're working on as well. Arena of Valor have got leaderboards. Um, that's really just the only edge they're going to give themselves here. If you've got a leaderboard, you, you can compare yourselves against others in solo queue and you're always going to have that fighting uh, spirit when you're going to solo queue. So there. And I think Vainglory, I think they produce better quality skins. They might be more expensive, but I think the really thing that gives me the, the KO for the skins on Vainglory glory is most of them with time and effort you can get for free so you don't even have to spend a penny and they're giving you things that most mobile or most mobas in general would make you pay for regardless so even though they're more expensive i think they're better quality and i also think that just by giving you the option of grinding them for free even with a complicated crafting system they're going to give themselves the edge in that respect so we've done the ui now let's look at the gameplay. This is where things will start to turn back in favour of Vainglory. Um, and I'll like start to explain why. Now, there's actually a couple of things that in-game Arena of Valor do very well. As you can see there, there's an extended communication system. You can chat during draft. You can also use voice chat, all of which add to a more um, complete communication experience in-game. Meaning that you can tell people to do things. You can ask people for certain tactics uh, and of course you could just chat to your allies on a general basis which is something more than that vainglory offers vainglory offers a very limited reach uh, currently of ways to interact with your teammates in game apart from emotes now one can say that the um having not having chat and having and not having voice chat reduces potential toxicity but we all know that people can use emotes for toxicity as well so it's not just uh toxicity through voice and through text um, every, if you want to be toxic in a game, you can be toxic in a game. And I don't think voice chat or text uh, really influences that too much. If anything, being on voice chat probably means that people are less likely to want to be toxic because it feels more personal. You wouldn't go up to someone and say, you're a massive noob, I hate you in real life, you know, if, if you barely knew them. So therefore, when talking on voice, I often feel like most people... Um, are less likely to be as toxic. So that's great. The communication in Arena of Valor is great. 
When it comes to the actual gameplay, it is clear it is more focused for a casual audience. Joystick control, it, whilst it, it gives you li so decent levels of control, I feel it's fairly limiting. It also means, I, you know, I feel like often you are kind of constricted and you don't quite have the freedom that you have in Vainglory movement. When it comes to launching a basic attack, you have a button that you can see I'm tapping there with the fist. That usually just attacks the, the closest, highest priority target to you, and that usually goes hero, tower, and then minion. There is the way to select a target that you want to attack, and that's using the manual select, and you can do that to select a hero or a minion, uh, but that won't allow you to uh, intuitively select a target like it does in Vainglory just by tapping on them. You have to cycle through those targets, uh, and often you'll find yourself in Arena of Valor just attacking the closest thing to you because it's just the easiest way to function, which is why you'll find that a lot of melee bruisers with lots of CC that can literally dive into the front line and just whack the first person in front of them often do quite well in Arena of Valor. Obviously at low levels you can see anything is viable, it's the same in Vainglory, pretty much anything is viable at low levels or low ranks, and I'm playing uh, a hero that I actually perform quite well, over, well with over this game, despite having played two or three games of Arena of Valor in total. And that's kind of coming back to another thing about Arena of Valor. There is a mechanical skill ceiling with Arena of Valor, especially with all joystick MOBA controlled games. Once you learn to stutter step, use your abilities, target your abilities properly, and understand trades and, and understand matchups, you, you're kind of hitting a ceiling in Arena of Valor, and then the rest of it comes down to teamwork, your rotations across the map, and so on and so forth. So, there is a lower skill ceiling for Arena of Valor. That's not, a that's not a bad thing. That's both a bad thing and a good thing, depending on how you want to play. And I think this is really what I want to drive home about these two games. They're kind of designed for different audiences. Arena of Valor is a more casual MOBA. It's something that you'll be able to pick up and play and feel very intuitive and, you know, almost always have a good performance. But you're always, you're never going to put yourself miles above someone else. Uh, and there's going to be a very, very close skill ceiling for everybody involved. A lot of it is going to come down to how you influence the map. So the skill from Arena of Valor, once you've got to that mechanical skill ceiling, the skill from Arena of Valor really comes from knowing how to influence the map and knowing how to influence your teammates, you know, by ganking and rotating and all that kind of thing. Whereas in Vainglory, the mechanical skill ceiling is a lot higher simply because the mechanics of Vainglory, the way that the game actually works, is a lot more intense. It is targeted tapping, uh, a lot of skill shots, and you can attack whatever hero you like just by tapping on them. But it, it, it is designed for a different style of audience. Vainglory is supposed to replicate a PC MOBA on mobile. Meaning that you know, you're looking for the hardcore to semi-hardcore gamers who want to get a ridiculously good MOBA experience on a mobile. Arena of Valor players know that it is not going to be as good as a PC MOBA. It's different, it's quicker, it's a little bit more um, intense, but you're not going to get the same kind of depth that you'd get from a PC MOBA. Uh, whereas Vainglory, it tries to compete on that PC MOBA level, and I think with the release of 5v5, you might even see it potentially do so. Another thing about Arena of Valor is just the tactics involved. I can't compare the two maps because Vainglory is about to release a 5v5, so I think a fairer comparison would be when Vainglory releases their 5v5 and we've had a lot of time to experience it, I'll do a full review of the uh, 5v5 map of Arena of Valor versus the 5v5 map of Vainglory. Uh, but in terms of tactics, it's obviously got the macro tactics involved. When it comes to micro teamfight tactics, however, I would say that there's less depth in Arena of Valor than there is in Vainglory. A lot of it is going to come from how you chain your abilities together, your positioning to make sure that you are, you're hard to hit, or if you're going to hit the first thing in front of you, it's going to be the most important thing. Whereas Vainglory has very high mobility teamfights where you can dive the back line and focus a target, and it's a lot easier to do that. It's not as easy to focus a single target in Arena of Valor than it is in Vainglory. Also, when it comes to depth of itemization and shopping, you can shop anywhere in the game of Arena of Valor, which means you can pick up any items, you can exploit your laning phase, and that's often what leads to the shorter game times, because if you dominate your lane, you can just pick up items and then dominate your lane even further. So if you get behind in a lane of Arena of Valor, you're going to continue to stay behind if that person is any good, and that, that is kind of the, the drawback of having a shop anywhere. It really punishes you for doing badly and provides very little comeback mechanics in that sense. Um... When it comes to Vainglory, you have to think about your back timing. Wave management is really important. Uh, you know, th th there's a lot more depth 
in terms of your overall movements on the map where you don't get that kind of same level from Arena of Valor. Obviously, you've got to think about where you go in terms of rotating between lanes, but obviously, but you don't quite have the need to back all of the time. You also have a restore in lane, which acts like the healing flask, but on a shorter cooldown. And you have the inclusion of talents, which are a unique, unique little extra that add a sort of an extra element of um, tactic to Arena of Valor. However, another thing is you don't need to last hit. Uh, Arena of Valor, I think you get, I, I think, I'm not sure that you, you, you'll have to sort of to correct me on this, but I think if you do get the last hit, you get a slightly extra amount of gold. But if you just are nearby a minion, it grants you gold when it dies. So you don't need to last hit in Arena of Valor. So that's one extra mechanic taken away that Vainglory almost requires you to be able to understand it for, in order for you to be able to function at the high level of Vainglory. You know, and then when you switch over to Vainglory, you have a game that is is trying to compete, like I said, as a PC MOBA. That the graphics in Vainglory far outweigh the graphics in Arena of Valor, but then the graphics in Vainglory pretty much outweigh most mobile games. In fact, you could even argue that they compete on a level with League of Legends, for instance, because they are just that good. The engine of from Vainglory was built to be this beast of a machine that would provide incredible level graphics for a mobile device and that's kind of what it has done in fact one of the dev devs once told me that you know the machine can run xbox one games that the 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 engine that the game runs on can run xbox one games so that's just how good it is in general it, it's just a very very um, high quality engine for the game to run on and when it comes to the, the touch controls of Vainglory, it's a lot more intuitive um, in the sense that, you know, you have direct control. That there is, you know, every single tap gives you direct control of your hero. And that leads to more mechanically intensive team fights, mechanically intensive trades. But it is also more punishing if you get it wrong. It's a lot harder to grasp than the Arena of Valor um, joystick control system. And often, you know, there's, a, so I guess we'd say, less margin for error in Vainglory, which is why it feels like when you're doing poorly you're going to continue to do poorly because it's it's again it's a super mechanically intensive system but it leads to these incredibly complex team fights that provide the wow moments that you think after you've done a really awesome team fight you thought that was a sick move it really feels like that because every every sort of um moment in vainglory really counts for something so then when you have to look at the casual game modes, we've already talked about the game time, and I actually think Arena of Valor's shorter game times favor the mobile platform. Um, but then people who play Vainglory come in expecting a high-level um, game mode, and, and therefore, you know, in general, are going to be more willing to invest themselves into longer games. But for the casual audience and for the majority audience, you know, shorter game modes are easier, which is why casual game modes are also really important. It's why you had the addition of Blitz. It's why you had the addition of Battle Royale, for instance. So speaking of these particular game modes, I really feel like Vainglory offers a little bit more in that sense because each individual game mode that you play, including the addition of Onslaught that will be coming out next week, um... They are feel like different games, and the addition of talents, whilst they add a certain pay-to-win aspect, um, but you know, very minimal pay-to-win aspect, but a certain pay-to-win aspect in some senses, they really make you feel like the the hero that you're playing has a different playstyle completely. So it really makes me feel like the hero that I once knew has given a whole new spin and kind of spices things up. So I, I actually like the addition of talents because it, it's, it definitely kind of changes the way that you think about the game. So all these casual game modes are really interesting and they add that, that twist that I think Vainglory needs because the one thing that Arena of Valor has over Vainglory in terms of gameplay is if you are not a MOBA gamer or if you're just not a gamer in general, the, the barrier for entry for Vainglory is much higher. Arena of Valor is so easy to pick up and play. It's quite um, easy to get the, to grips with. You can actually have success. And people love success. This is something that's really important. People like to win. And Arena of Valor makes it easy early on to win because it's easy to play. You just have to tap one button to attack something and tap one button to move or move all your joystick around. Everything flashes up in your face when you need to buy it from anywhere on the map. It's so easy to understand and to get to grips with that for the casual audience that, that aren't hardcore gamers, AOV is a better choice. But for anybody that enjoys games at a high level, there is no comparison to Vainglory. And so you're looking at two almost different market audiences for these two these two games. It's why they can coexist perfectly fine. You know, I think the transition is that you'd start on Arena of Valor, get introduced to MOBAs, eventually find that, you know, you're seeking something more challenging and Vainglory is that more challenging game. These two games, it's so difficult to compare them, you know, 
truly compare them because they aren't really meant for the same kind of player. Like, the only drawover is that they're both mobile MOBAs, so a MOBA player would enjoy both. So if we, like, gloss over this entirely, you know, Vainglory has got the superior controls. You can't beat touch uh, controls. It, it, it trumps joystick every day of the week. The gameplay for Vainglory is a lot smoother, buttery smooth, you could say. Uh, the tactics of Vainglory is interesting. I'm not comparing macro tactics here. I'm just comparing the tactical decision-making that you have to make for things like minion control, waves, trades, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot more uh, less forgiving in Vainglory than it is in Arena of Valor, so therefore you have to be more tactical-minded about your approach. The communication in-game, however, is well into Arena of Valor territory. It has in-game voice chat it has extended voice line or extended chat lines you can even just use a straight up chat function so arena of valor has the better communication i don't need to explain why vainglory's graphics are better the game length for a mobile platform obviously is in favor of arena of valor it's ever so slightly shorter but that casual game mode i think because of how different all the casual game modes are is is in vainglory's territory so i think the the major thing that you need to take from this video is that that Arena of Valor and Vainglory are both really good games, but they're not meant for the same kind of player. Vainglory is meant to be for those players that are seeking a high-level competitive experience with a massive skill ceiling, um, you, you know, looking for greater challenges on a mobile platform. It is meant for the hardcore gamer. It's meant for the ex-League of Legends player, the ex-Dota player that can't find the time to turn their PC on anymore. Or it's meant for the those younger um, players that want to aspire uh, to sort of find some, something really engaging on the platform that they've known for gaming, which is this mobile device. Arena of Valor is, is meant for a more casual audience. It's a casual audience that might, you know, a portion of them might want to get it to that highest level and compete at the highest level. So, you know, both of them kind of appeal to different styles of players you'll find people that play both of them and there's a massive crossover like i know myself i have friends who love vainglory and love arena of valor and that again I, in my opinion they're just meant to do different things they are just different games um at the end of the day if you are searching for a hardcore gaming experience that matches pc level quality vainglory is your game if you're searching for an easy moba that you can pick up and play in almost any given situation and get some kills you know, Arena of Valor is your ballpark. They're both good games at the end of the day, but if I were to really suggest one for the hardcore gamer or the, or the, or the true gamer, Vainglory would be my suggestion. If you want to just get into mobile MOBAs and have some fun without really investing yourself, Arena of Valor is your shout.